सो हेलो एवरी वन टूडे वी आर डाइविंग इन टू अ सिग्निफिकेंट अमेंडमेंट रिलीज बाय इंडियन रेगुलेटर्स कंसर्निंग द न्यू ड्रग्स एंड क्लिनिकल ट्रायल रूल्स दैट इज एन डी सी टी रूल्स ऑफ ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन इन दिस वीडियो वी विल एक्सप्लोर द की चेंजेस इंट्रोड्यूस इन द इमेंडमेंट एंड डिस्कस द कंप्लाइंस रिक्वायरमेंट एंड हाईलाइट द मोस्ट क्रूशल अपडेट्स रिगार्डिंग कॉन्ट्रैक्ट रिसर्च ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वी विल ऑल्सो एग्जामिन हाउ दिस चेंजेस इम्पैक्ट द एंटायर इंडस्ट्री अकॉर्डिंग टू इंडियन रेगुलेशन एंड वॉट इज द फ्यूचर ऑफ दिस अमेंडमेंट्स Please make sure that you subscribe to the channel for such amazing updates and without further ado let's start Now let us see what is this amendment all about So this particular amendment was released on September 19 2024 by India's Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and this particular pivotal notification was introduced as a significant amendment to already released ndct rules of 2019 this particular update significantly focuses on the contract research organization that is cro's this particular amendment introduces mandatory registration and setting a higher operational standard to improve the quality transparency integrity of the clinical trial and the babe studies that are conducted in india now this particular regulation shall be effective from april 1st 2025 and this particular amendment marks a significant step in advancing india's clinical research ecosystem and in this particular video we will explore the key aspect of this amendment we will deep down into what are the changes and how these changes will impact the cro's in india and the entire clinical research landscape so let's explore now the most significant change that has come is that this amendment has defined what is a cro that is a contract research organization now a formal definition of a contract research organization has been given in the amendment and it clearly defines as per the indian regulations so a cro is described as either a sponsor or an independent entity so even if the cro is at the sponsor's end they have to define it and it can be a third party that is an independent entity this particular cro a commercial or an academic so it can be a commercial cro like we have iqbia icon ppd or it can be an academic cro also and that is this legally authorized this particular organization to conduct clinical trials for bab studies on behalf of the sponsor okay now the amendment has defined this particular definition as a clinical research organization okay so pay attention a clinical research organization means that sponsor or a body commercial or academic or of the other category also owned by the individual or an organization having the status of legal entity okay and this particular entity whosoever that is named and called to which the sponsor may delegate okay so to this particular entity the sponsor may delegate or transfer in writing some or all of the task duties or obligation regarding clinical trial or the bab study okay so the contact research organization they have clearly defined as a clinical research organization and this particular body can be a sponsor body a independent body can be commercial or academic or other category also and that can be owned by an individual also by an organization also but it needs to have a legal status that is it should be a legal entity okay and by whatsoever it may be called and this particular organization would be involved where the sponsor would delegate or transfer in writing some or all of the task duties or obligation regarding clinical trial or the bab study requirements okay so by this amendment they have made a significant impact in clearly defining what exactly is a cro the next thing would be that they have set clear requirements for registration of the cro now we have seen requirements for cro registration previously also in ndct rule 2019 but now they have mandatorily required to be registered and one of the most significant update is that 
all the CROs who are operating in the jurisdiction of India would need to register under the newly added chapter of 5A and no CROs will be allowed to conduct clinical trial or any related studies without obtaining this particular registration from the central licensing authority that is CDSU. So every CRO who works in India who conducts clinical trial need to have a mandatory registration moving forward and they have to obtain this registration before 1st April 2025 because 1st April 2025 is the date from which it will come into effect. So everyone operating or conducting clinical trials under the name of a CRO needs to be registered. The next update is regarding the registration process. So all the CROs must apply for registration using form CT07B. Please remember this particular form. So registration of the CRO is using form CT07B and along with the form completion they would require a specified amount of fees and documentation as listed in 6th and 9th schedules. Okay, so 6th and 9th schedules of the NDCT rules and the central licensing authority is also being obligated to process this application within 45 working days. So the onus is also on the central licensing authority that not to delay this registration of the CROs and provide them registration within 45 working days and the verdict whether they accept the registration or reject it. And if the applications are rejected, they can appeal to this decision. So as you can see, they have clearly defined where you need to register in which schedule the requirements are given for the registration. They have also obligated the Indian regulators also to be compliant, to be on point and complete this application within 45 working days. That is a significant step when it comes to uh, doing ease of business. Okay, having uh, Indian regulators uh, easing the process. So this is regarding the mandatory registration and the CRA re registration process. Now the amendment also has a significant change in terms of oversight of the CROs. Now the inspection and oversight of the CRO will be done by the central licensing authority or its authorized officers and this particular agency or officers are empowered to inspect the registered CRO. So they would have a list of registered CRO and they would be authorized to inspect this particular CROs without any prior notice. Now this is a significant change. So the central agency is very serious about good conduct of clinical trial and they would conduct any inspection without prior notice. These particular inspectors will ensure that the CRO is having compliance to good clinical practices that is GCP and other regulatory standards and reinforce a culture of continuous oversight and quality assurance. So now the regulators have been given power to inspect the CROs whenever they want. This will help the industry or the entire CRO landscape to be compliant to GCP and regulatory standards and ensure that there is a proper oversight and quality assurance as an ongoing process. Now this is a significant step in terms of inspection and oversight by the central licensing authority. Next thing would be now if the inspection is conducted what would be the consequences for non-compliance. So this particular amendment clearly outlines that there would be certain penalties for non-compliance which would range from warnings to cancel of registration. So if it is a minor offense, they would warn the CROs and if there are significant non-compliance, then they would also cancel the registration of the CRO. And these CROs that fail to adhere to NDCT rules, okay, or the New Drugs and Cosmetic Act, these CROs will also be prohibited from conducting future clinical trials. So not only the current clinical trials would be affected, the future clinical trial would also be affected if there is a significant non-compliance. Next thing is that once the CRO is registered, they will have this registration valid for five years and after five years, they would have to renew this particular registration. This particular renewal process would be the same procedure that is form CT07B would be used and again the initial registration and re renewal of the registration shall be required. So not only the CROs are given registration or legal status for the entire time duration but it is limited to five years and every five years they would have to seek renewal. Now finally let us understand what this particular amendment uh, would 
due to the Indian clinical research industry. So this particular amendment would definitely have an impact on the NDCT uh, rules that is amendment made in 2024. And this particular amendment make a landmark regulatory shift uh, for clinical research organization and they have a significant oversight over them. By mandating registration and reinforcing the oversight of this amendment, it aligns to India's clinical trial framework with the global standards so that the CROs do not get non-compliant when it comes to Indian trials. And also, if there are smaller CROs, they may initially face challenges, but the overall effect it is expected to be positive to the industry. And this particular change would foster more transparent, ethical and credible environment for the clinical trials being conducted in India. And finally, as India continues to rise among key players in global clinical research landscape, these particular rules play a very crucial role in having a sustainable and ethical growth in clinical research industry. This will ensure that the foreign sponsor would be willing to come to India because the Indian regulatory would have these particular rules which are high in ethical as well as quality standards and it will reassure the global players to have the clinical trials in India and it will significantly have a landmark shift towards the conduct of clinical trials in India. So these were the changes in the amendment that is released for NDCT rule 2019. So thank you for watching this video. If this updates or this information was helpful to you then please make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that it brings us additional motivation to bring you such important updates.